Welcome to TGIF. Well, another exciting TGIF, and I don't know about you, but I wonder what they're thinking. I don't know. We don't hear from them very often. Don't forget to email us and let us know what you're thinking, what you like, what you would like to hear about. But it has been a crazy, crazy morning for morning. us because we try to always have a word of the day. And sometimes we have several and it's hard to decide. So I'm not exactly sure what the word of the day is because we're going to hear it right now and I'm going to be, I'm going to find out what it is too. <laughs> the word of the day is feelings. What do you think of that? Well, that's one we talked about. You know, feelings are all over the place from feeling tired to feeling hungry like I am right now, to feeling happy, to feeling sad, to feeling overworked to feeling underpaid. I mean, the list goes on. Feelings is one of those emotions that we kind of tie into just about everything within our life. Yeah, we really do. And the thing about doing this on camera, we don't know how they're feeling. Mm -mm. <laughs> We'd like to know how you're feeling, so let us know. But what we're talking about today is looking at feelings and faith. Mm. So putting them together and understanding the differences between them and really trying to tie it back to scripture. And we did look at a lot of scripture this time too, just trying to understand that across the Bible, there are so many uh, deep theological understandings and diving into the understanding of our faith. We chose though Hebrews chapter 11, verse one. Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. I, I encourage you to go read all of the book of Hebrews because mm -hmm. it's it's a great book. But for sure go back and read Hebrews 11 because that's kind of the, the, the founding people of the faith and the religion and those that were really the, the ones that stuck it out. And although they messed up in places and had hard times, they are still the ones we remember for their faithfulness. Notice I didn't say for their feelings mm, because big that's a difference. big, big difference. It's, I mean, think of Noah. Exactly. Go build an ark. Do you think he was feeling up for the job, had the skill, had the time, had the energy to go build an ark? Not to mention all the people around him really did not have the faith that he had. They did not believe in God. Mm -hmm. And so you had a lot of pagan people around him and really what an opportunity to take Noah out. You know, they were really tired of him, tired of hearing from him. So there's a threat on his life all the time as well when you think about the complexity of the society and what he was faced with. So it's important that we understand that his feelings were probably all over the place. But what he was really confident in is that God had told him to do this. And though he couldn't see it, he couldn't see the, the disaster that was coming and the chaos and everything that was coming, he trusted that God had given him good information because he knew he had a relationship with God. And that's about faith. And that's really what Hebrews 11 is talking about all of those people have faith in their great faith. So it's faith, not a feeling that we're talking about today. And it makes me think of all of our moves, our five moves within ministry. Each time we were told we were going to move, I, I have to be honest, my immediate feeling was, I have to move again, we have to pack again, we have to move the kids in school again. There were a lot of feelings and emotions that were wrapped up in that. But it was truly that faith and trust in what we couldn't see. We couldn't see what was going to happen at each church we were going to be at or why God would have us there. But when we look back, we realize why we were there. And so that having that faith in, in, the, in the unseen, in what you do not know, that is hard because our feelings do get involved. I mean, there were, we shed some tears over some of the moves and... Because the reality is we are emotionally attached with each, each congregation. We love into each congregation. Are there difficult times and struggles? Sure, and that offsets some of those feelings at times, but ultimately we love every congregation we have been a part of. And so when you're talking about that feeling, okay, God, are you sure? No, God is sure, and God, that's part of this scripture, the assurance about what we cannot see. Mm -hmm. We had to live into the fact that faith is not a feeling. What faith is, faith is something that you that can be present regardless of how you feel. Now that's hard because when I feel tired, I don't really want to do what I have to do. Yeah. But you know, that faith is having that, uh, per, that knowing 
regardless of the circumstances. Exactly. Regardless of the circumstances, I am in all the way because this, we're talking about the God of creation. Mm -hmm. This is this is not this little God. This is the big God of creation. And so I'm all in regardless of how I wake up in the morning or how I feel like I'm going to bed. But it's being persistent is the next one. That's yeah. huge. When, when we think about persistence, <clears throat> I can think of a lot of times that we were overwhelmed by so much, but even in some of the small things, we always were persistent. Okay, God, what are you doing here? How do we make the next step? How do we just take the next step sometimes, right? That was sometimes that persistence. We're going to be persistent. We're pursuing God. And, and pursuing God, exactly right. Not pursuing what we want. And it's just, and it's so hard because we are, we, we are given the right to have opinions. And it's easy to want what we want and feel that's the right thing to do. But you've got to be connected to God, persistently developing your relationship and deepening your relationship with God to make these right decisions. Uh, uh, faith is refusing to not give up. No matter what, mm -hmm. no matter what's going on around you. And I can imagine Noah, you know, building that ark and just thinking, really, this is craziness and I'm building this in the middle and there's going to be a flood? That just had to be a one. But I think of the times we've been in those same kind of situations. So we can relate to these people. But the thing that we have to remember is the feeling informing us about God. Mm. Or is God the one that is forming us about how we should move forward? we got to be careful because sometimes we allow the feeling to say, okay, well, this is how I understand God or something, rather than saying, no, this is the God of all creation that is so much bigger. And so letting our feelings inform us about God is really not helpful. It is not helpful at all. Because there are times when we do see those people, the faith, that they feel like, okay, God, where are you in the midst of this? And they're mm. questioning. Questioning is not the what we're questioning here is mm -hmm. actually this feeling and allowing the feeling to drive how you understand God. No, we understand God because we have God's biblical word, the Bible. Mm -hmm. Read God's word and let God's word inform you about God. Because God wants us to live a life of faith, not a life of feelings. And we're in a culture, we live in a culture that says if it feels good, do it. If it feels right, do it. But as believers, as Christians, we know that everything, we need to run everything through God. We need to be on our knees. We need to pray. We need to be in God's word because that is what's going to give you the know of where God might be trying to take you. And again, remembering that you're going, often faith is, you're not seeing it. You're trusting. You're being obedient. Do you always feel like doing the right thing? I mean, that's no, it side. is not easy to be nice to people that you just don't feel like being nice to. Yeah. Or I don't have time to help this person because I'm busy today. So, I mean, it it's tough. It is really hard. So what it would be the goal of the believer? What is that goal? And it's develop, develop that kind of faith that is persistent above the feelings, mm -hmm. obviously. That's mm -hmm. huge. Mm -hmm. But then only done with that deepening relationship which is spending time in God's Word, spending time in the relationship, developing the relationship. It's deepening that relationship. So even when it, you say, well, if I got up 10 minutes earlier, mm. I could read God's Word. And then the alarm goes off and you're like, okay, well, I know I got 10 more minutes to, to hit the snooze or <laughs> to relax rather than getting out of bed and going and reading God's Word. Because that's allowing that feeling of tiredness or that feeling of, mm. Well, I could do it tomorrow. Tomorrow maybe I'll feel better at whatever time, mm -hmm. and so I'll do it tomorrow. So it's putting it off, too. Sometimes mm -hmm. we put things off, so it's not easy. It is hard. And people of faith aren't people that just were born with faith. It was consistently, regularly doing the things to mm -hmm. deepen your like faith that. with God. So when somebody, well, that person, she, she or he, it, they're always reading, they're always journaling, they're always doing this, they must have more faith than me. It's because they consistently have done that and created that habit and probably over time have recognized, wow, when I don't do this, things are kind of falling apart. I mean, that's something I've been experiencing recently. I have really learned to love listening to devotions while I walk. Typically, I used to do my praise and worship music, but I've been doing the devotions and so many times, I don't walk first thing in the morning. I'm thinking, I've already had several hours of my morning without this. And then I hear it and I think, wow, had I 
listened or read that first thing, it might have changed those first couple hours of the day. So it's being persistent in, I'm going to do this, whether I feel like doing it now or not. And how can you, once you get there, so let's use an example like going to church. Mm. Everybody's not having a good morning, everybody's off, and mm. you know it's a struggle to get here. That's a reality. When you enter into that worship, and it's not the song that you were hoping to hear, or it's not the piece of scripture you wanted to hear, or even the pastor's not doing a great job today, but he's struggling, does that mm. lessen the experience of worship? Mm. It Is shouldn't. it the feeling? It shouldn't because your heart should be open to receive what God wants you to receive, regardless of how you're feeling. Maybe you're angry at your significant other that day or angry at that child that's sitting with you in church and you're harboring that and you're not opening up to what God wants to speak and do in and through you. So again, those feelings get in the way of a lot of things. Yeah, and it comes down to almost being able to see the invisible in the mm. moments of great, great conflict. The invisible, obviously God, but almost the impossible. God, how in the world can you use me in this moment rather than saying, this really stinks, I do not like it here, but how can you use me here, God? This is where I am. How can you move me through this and how can I be of use to you mm -hmm. in this moment? I think of just a year ago from today, we knew we were coming here, but we had to find somewhere to live. And that task during COVID, during shelter in place was, overwhel was overwhelming. So, but it was in that obedience and that faith that, okay, God, this is the next place you have us. All of these things are complicated, but I can't stay stuck in a feeling. I had to move forward in faith. So stuck in a feeling versus moving forward in faith. That's I like good. That. I like that. It's okay, <laughs> better write that down. Remember yeah. that one. So that takes us to our question of the day. What are, what, what are we looking for a question of the day? Being honest with yourself. Are you led by your faith or your feelings? Mm. Like, I'm really hungry right now. We're going to lunch after this. So that is, a, that's on my mind. But in the important things of life, because it's okay to be hungry and to go eat, but in the important things in life, what is leading you, your feelings or your faith? Not easy, mm -mm. not easy to, mm -mm. to bridge that or overcome some of those feelings, but knowing that the God of all creation loves you, the God of all creation wants to be a part of everything you're mm -hmm. going through. So open that up and see what God might do in those spaces. And know that these topics, these titles of the TGIFs or the words, just know they're things we struggle with as well. They are things that we are working through as a couple as in, and as individuals in our relationship with God. So we do not come here saying we know the answers. We just want this open conversation to hopefully open minds and hearts to hearing how God can use something that we say or share to to make a to change something in your life. Do for not his let glory. your feelings inform you about God. Mm -mm. Allow God to inform you about God and that's best found in the scriptures. Amen. So we will see you back here on TGIF next week. Bye y'all.